Okay, now we're going to look at more integration using trig identities. So 10 squared x is another one I can't integrate directly. Um, I've got these standard results, these results from the formula book. So I can integrate sec squared x and get 10. I can integrate sec x 10x and get sec x. I can integrate negative cosec squared x and get cot x. Or I could integrate negative cosec x cot x and get cosec x. But I've got no answer for 10 squared x. But I've got an identity that can change it into sec squared x. So I'll be using that. So the identities this time are we've got cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. If I divided through by cos, cos squared x even, that will give me 1 plus 10 squared x equals sec squared x. So that's the identity I'm going to be using to get rid of 10 squared x. So all I've got to do is subtract 1 from both sides and say 10 squared x is equal to sec squared x minus 1. So I can change 10 squared x to sec squared x minus 1. So I'm going to be working out the integral of sec squared x minus 1 with respect to x. And I know sec squared x integrated is 10x. So I can change that. 1 integrated or negative 1 integrated is negative x and plus c. Okay, so cot is another one I can't integrate directly. Uh, but I can change it to cosec. Cot squared x can be changed to cosec squared x. Again, using the trig identity, so I've got sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1. If I divide through by sine, that will give me 1 plus cot squared x equals cosec squared x. And I can integrate cosec squared x. So if I subtract 1 from both sides, that will give me cot squared x is equal to cosec squared squared x minus 1. So I'm going to integrate cosec squared x minus 1 with respect to x. So cosec squared x integrates to negative cot x because negative cosec squared x integrates to cot x. So cosec squared x integrates to negative cot x. So that's negative cot x Negative 1 integrated is negative x and plus c. Okay, here's another integration that we need to use trig identities for. So this time we use the identity of sine 2x or sine 2a. Sine 2a is 2 sine a cos a. And that is exactly what we've got here. So we can say sine 2x is 2 sine x cos x. So we can change 2 sine x cos x into sine 2x. So we've got sine 2x, the integral of sine 2x with respect to x. Quick note for the sine and cos. So we're integrating, so we're going anti-clockwise and sine goes to negative cos so that would be negative cos 2x and divide by the bracket differentiated so divide by 2 so that's negative half cos 2x plus c and again you could check that answer by differentiating it so differentiate it and you should get back to sine 2x Okay, here's another similar question. So it's in the same kind of form as the sine 2a identity, which is 2 sine a cos a. But this time it's sine 4x. So if we change a to 4x, that will give me sine, or this will be 8x equals 2 sine 
4x cos 4x. And now we've almost got exactly the same thing, but I need sine 4x cos 4x by itself. So if I half both sides, that will give me half sine 8x is sine 4x cos 4x. So then I can change sine 4x cos 4x into half sine 8x. Half sine 8x. So now I'm going to integrate. So I'll make this note again. So sine goes to negative cos when I integrate. So we're going to get negative cos 8x. And we're going to divide by the bracket differentiated, which is 8. So a half divided by 8 is going to be a 16th. So minus negative a 16th cos 8x plus c.